good opportunity for the lads. Um, you know, if you really want to find out is the guy going to cut it in the in the championship business end of the year, you know, what better opportunity than to, to see the reigning All Ireland champions and league champions coming to town and, and getting the chance to, to pit them in, against that type of opposition. So it's a great opportunity for us tonight. On that note, is there a smell of revenge at all in the air tonight or is it just a case of regardless of the opposition you have to get the season up and running somewhere and tonight at Temple Stadium? Yeah, unfortunately, revenge is not on the agenda. You know, I mean, the reality is 2009 is a closed chapter. Uh, we've moved on now, it's 2010. Uh, the lads have trained very well for the last six weeks. So, you know, it's all about bringing that, what they've done on the training field for the last number of weeks, out onto the out onto Simple Stadium tonight. You've named Noel McGrath corner forward tonight. We know there is an issue over midfield, but with James isn't around at the moment. Benny Dunn named there tonight. Might we see Noel perhaps using that area at all this evening? No, I'm very happy with, uh, you know, there's, there's great competition for places around the middle of the park. You know, Benny and Garrod have done, done very well at various stages right throughout last year. And, uh, you know, there's positions up for grabs, not just in, in midfield, there's positions up for grab, grabs right over the field, right all over the field. And, uh, you know, it's key for us, I guess, to try and get two people challenging for every position. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's, that's a nice headache for the manager to have. And hopefully that's what we'll have come the end of the league. OK, Liam, best of luck this evening. Thanks, David. Right. Yeah, Liam Sheedy chatting to Dave McIntyre a little while ago indoors, obviously. Um, but you know, 2009 a closed chapter. That's what we expect Liam to say. Two monsters in a row. Tip are a team that look like if they could break the hoodoo, they could go on the rampage for the next half decade. Well, definitely. I think the age profile and everything of the team is good, Daryl. You know, you've young players like. Brendan Maher, Parag Maher and Noel McGrath obviously was a sensation and they're players that could be for the next decade dominating for Tipperary in, in the Ireland Championship um, but I mean the ty type of team he's picked even though he has nine regulars he's brought in a player like Hugh Maloney and Seamus Hennessy Seamus Hennessy is playing great for giving cup hurling at the moment but he's a good physical player in the half forward line and maybe last year he thought that in the final like Kenny's half back line was so dominant and he didn't sort of get the return that he'd like from the half forward line that he's looking at that as in, in an experimental mode but I suppose the fact that he's playing nine regulars or nine as you'd say first team starter shows that he really wants to win it and he wants to try and get his two points tonight. Yeah, you mentioned Paul Rigmar. There's great word coming out about this young fellow. We hope, hopefully we'll get to see him, Daddy. Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting is to see that he's left Pat Kerwig and John O'Brien on the bench tonight. It's, it's been well noted over the last couple of years that the, the tip half forward line have struggled slightly under puck outs and winning hard balls. So he's gone with Maloney there and he's gone with Hennessy there tonight. The, the need to strengthen it up. Uh, he hasn't started Lark, Lark Corbett. He's reverted back to Michael Webster, mm -hmm. you know, six foot five. Uh, on the edge of the parallelogram as mm. well uh, he needs to start showing something at this stage but I think the critical aspect from, from Tip's point of view is the appointment of Owen Kelly as captain, mm. I think it's a really astute move he's suffered with injuries over the last couple of years but I think by, by naming him as captain, the guy is in the, at, at the peak of his powers at the moment, mm. hurling over his skin we saw that in the All-Ireland final after yeah, he's, a he's, really he's, bad season with injury he yeah. came on and nearly turned the game, tremendous and absolutely I think it's a very astute move, I think the rest of the Tip players mm. look up to him very very much so I think that's critical, I think it's another sign of Liam Sheedy's management, he's proved to be a, a, an incredible manager so far but a Tip public will accept nothing less than an All-Ireland this year, a Munster final won't suffice this year. But a good point, I mean the way Sheedy played the whole aftermath too I thought was very clever, instead of crying in his beer about the penalties and red cards and that, he just said it's over, let's move on now. So he put a cap on that kind of whinging culture yeah. and Tipper out here today now, fresh start. Yeah, well I mean, when all is said and done he's had reasonable success as well, Darla. he's had as you said two months of championships in a row and I mean, at this stage, it has to be an all Ireland final or nothing. But he is a good young manager. You mm. know, I mean, I played against Liam Sheedy. I know what he was like as a player. He was teak tough. And he was a kind of a meticulous kind of back. And I'd say he pro probably brings that to the to the party when it comes to a manager's position. I'd say he goes through every single position in fierce detail. I'd say the players have fantastic time for him. I'd say he commands great respect. And, you know, as I said, like, he's experimenting a little bit with certain positions. I definitely think he's pinpointing the half forward line. They might get a good bit of return from their full forward line with Lexa Kelly, Noel McGrath, and Michal Webster because. On the other side, Kilkenny's full back line is an experience. Mm. Young Brennan mm. is in from Dunham Megan. Um, Brian Hogan is full back. He's normally centre back. And John Dalton is in cornerback. So that's where they might get some return, particularly you know in that full forward sector. OK, well, thanks for that for now. Move off the pitch and it's going to hold the ball up. And I think in, in, in circumstances like that, it, it can be da more dangerous than, uh, than water on the pitch. Uh, I don't know, maybe it, it, it can stop, but it's, it seems to be just uh, getting heavy and whatever about the problems of seeing the ball in the lights and, and, and in the snow coming down, it's, you have a real problem on, on the ground. But uh, I see that the managers are still out there. Uh, Liam Sheedy and Brian Cody, and uh, I think ultimately it's hard, to, hard to, to see this game going ahead. 
Nicky, the, you've mentioned the footprints there, and that is obviously a difficulty worse than water, I suppose, and you've been around the block a few times, you know exactly what the story is. We're looking down at the Kilkenny players here below our commentary position. They're being pelted by snowballs by some of the crowd. It's it's really bizarre looking down here this evening. Yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like I say, like the Kilkenny, all the players are, are tugged out there just waiting around, and I think... Uh, most people are expecting that it won't go ahead and uh, just wait 15 minutes. Hopefully it stops. From the players' point of view, as things stand at the moment, Nicky, if you were back down there, would you want, want this game to go ahead? You, you, well, you'd really have been looking forward to the, the game because both teams have picked str the strongest teams they have. And I think, as Dahi said earlier on, there's, there's an edge to Tiberi and Kilkenny. These are the two best teams in the, in the country. It, Tipperary want to actually get one over in Kilkenny. They lost three times to them last year, so it was a big. It, it is a very, very big game, and there's a, a, an anxiety about the players. And now here you are at five minutes before throwing, and possibly no chance of playing. You can see the two managers, Brian Cody and Liam Sheedy, out there at the moment, looking around or possibly wondering if this game will get played tonight. At the moment, we're not quite sure. We'll find out in ten minutes or so. But Nicky, if this game does go ahead, we know they play, played each other three times last year. All the victories went to Kilkenny, so. In that itself, is this game more important for Tipperary? Yeah, I think this is a big, this is a really big game for Tipperary. They came a long ways last year. Ultimately, came came up short just to one team, to Kilkenny in the league final, and to Kilkenny ultimately in the All Ireland final. But I think this is a uh, this. This, this is a year, a really important year for him, and uh, this is the one they, want to, they would have wanted to be starting here with a win at home in Turles. OK, the thoughts of Nick English in a dry commentary position. Back down to Dara, where it's not quite so comfortable. Uh, don't feel too sorry for me, Dave. Thanks for that, and thanks to Nicky. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, there's no blame game here. There is no plan to be put in place for unprecedented circumstances like that. That's not the point. We're just really wondering uh, whether or not we'll get hurling if the snow stops, I guess, in seven or eight minutes now. We might have. I'd say if you were a book maker now you'd be given fairly juicy eyes. In terms of the more familiar faces, where are you at training and conditioning wise? I suppose we have very little done really, you know, just I suppose about three or four weeks work behind us at this stage. But I mean that's the situation probably for Tipperary as well, you know, and it's early days, so it's very, very hard to predict how the game will go. But it's you know it's a great opener to the league and it's also under late so it's kind of a new dimension to it. So you know we're looking forward to it. It isn't something that your players will be used to playing under the lights. And we look out there, there's a little bit of snow as well. Can you envisage many issues this evening? It's interesting, our age, you know, just a bit of everything there. No, once the game starts, it's, it's all systems go. Like, you know, it's as ever, you know, the game is on and the competitive instinct breaks out in both teams. And it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. Yourselves and Tip becoming very familiar with each other at this stage. Played three times last year. Two of those, there was just a punk at the ball between you. Do you see this tip, tip team have the potential to really improve once again this year? I think Tipper now standing team already, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, and obviously they will be looking. I mean, every team wants to improve. You're never happy with where you are. You want to keep pushing on if at all possible. Of course, they'll want to improve, but I mean, improvement for Tipperary means they're going to be absolutely very, very difficult to beat. Kilkenny have always shown the utmost respect for the league, as the evidence is five league titles in 10 years. Is it a case again this year that you're in it to win it? Oh, well, certainly, you know, I mean, we take tonight's game. Both teams want to win tonight's game, you know, and. I suppose from the league point of view, the losers tonight are under pressure exactly because um, it's just the top two teams in the final like last year. So, you know, we treat the league with respect absolutely and we would love to win the league again. Brian, you're entering your 12th year managing this Kilkenny team. Obviously, a few change faces have come and gone over the years. Starting a new season, do you still get the same pre-season buzz of excitement that you always did? Yeah, very definitely. You know, it's a great time. You know, it's the first big game of the year now and certainly we're all looking forward to it very, very much. OK, Brian, thanks for your time. Best of luck tonight. Thanks very much. Dave McIntyre with Brian Cody a little earlier and I uh, know that Brian Cody's been in charge heading into his 12th season but I could say pretty certainly that not even Brian Cody has ever been in charge of a team that have played hurling in under floodlights in these conditions as we're hearing now there's um, just for a second yeah, 15 minutes, what I told you a little bit earlier. They're postponing a decision on whether the match goes ahead for 15 minutes, which means a bit of booing going on behind me. I don't know what they're expected to do, but uh, probably get out there, you hardy men. It's only a bit of snow. But to be fair, lads, if you look up there, how are you going to distinguish a slitter from a snowflake? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you've got to be logical about decisions like this. Player welfare is, is paramount, first and foremost. I mean, it would be incredulous to think that they'll go ahead if this continues in the vein that it is bearing in mind that there's 15 guys on, on, on both sides going out and their welfare is paramount but aside from that I mean we were just making a point I mean the goalkeeper's putting the ball out 70 yards down the park you just you just won't be in a position to see what's coming down are you catching snowballs or, or, or mm. what the hell is going on but I mean I think it's correct and if, if it says like this I think Dara it's fair to assume that in 15 minutes time they'll most likely decide that, that this